Okay, now that we have the mirror installed, the next step is to uh, install truss tubes. This scope does have unequal length trusses on the sides, a long, a long one in the back and a short one in the front. The first thing you want to do, you want to back off all the uh, thumb bolts for the lower truss connectors showing about three-eighths of an inch of thread. This way uh, nothing will get in your way when you put them together. Uh, I'm going to begin with the shorter truss which goes to the front. I want to show the bottom part of the truss has a recessed groove for the thumb bolt to sit in. So the plates on the top should be out. So not like this, but like this. Okay. Let's start with the front truss. They hook in from the sides and then the thumb bolts will go into the recessed groove so they do not need to be made very tight, just snugged up. It's impossible for them to come out. Uh, the next one I'm going to grab is one of the unequal length ones. Again, they can only go on one way. Obviously, you can't go on that way, so it's going to go on this way. Put it on the side. Uh, one nice thing about this arrangement is, is the trusses can only be installed one way. Uh, you, can't, you can't mix them up. So when I am uh, fabricating the telescope, um, the, the way I put them on is the way they will always be put on. So the repeatable assembly of the scope is as accurate as it could possibly be. Here's the other unequal length truss. And now the last one is going to be the back, which is the longer equal length truss. This one, depending on what options you have, will always have the uh, connection wire, which uh, finishes the connection from the rocker to the upper tube assembly. This one goes on, same way. Tighten them down. The wire will go inside the trusses and eventually hook up to the... Uh, to the encoder arm wire. I'm going to tighten that one. And that completes the installation of the trusses. Okay, before we continue, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the options. Uh, we are no longer attaching the dew controller to the scope. Uh, this gives you option of where you want to put it. Uh, you'll take notice of the wiring that everything has male ends on it. The preferred location for the dew controller is actually right here and then you can velcro it on uh, to the top of the mirror box plate. Uh, this way you can come out with your uh, dew strips from here and run them on the outside of the light shroud or if you want to get creative and run them up a truss tube. Uh, so we have male ends on everything up at the upper tube attachment, the upper tube assembly attachment, uh, or down here. So you can put it here, you can put it up there any way you want. So basically, wherever you put it, what would happen here at the bottom, this one would plug in there, and then the one from the other side of the truss would come in and plug into here. And then this, of course, would be Velcroed down. So I just wanted to show that. If you don't want it here, we supply a coupler here that goes in there and then you can just couple the wires together like that. This would actually run behind the encoder arm to keep it tucked to the scope and then plug in like that and then that sits on top of the mirror box which will eventually get covered by the light shroud. Alright, the next step is to install the upper tube assembly or the front cage. Um, this scope has approximately a 77 inch zenith so I can reach uh, to install the upper tube assembly without the need of a ladder. Uh, the first thing we want to do, same as the lower truss mounts, we want to make sure that the thumb bolts on the upper tube assembly are backed off, showing about 3 eighths to a half inch of thread. This is very important on the upper tube assembly because you don't want to get it up there and then find out that uh, you got one that's uh, hanging up and then have to take it down. I want to hold the upper tube so that the focus serves to my chest and then basically I'm going to get it up over my head. The first thing I want to do is I want to install 
this back one. I want to drop the back one in. Then I'm going to drop this one in. Then I'm just going to lay it down. The uh, upper tube it actually has protectors on the uh, bottom of the lower ring to prevent anything from scratching or anything. Then put those two in. I'm just going to pull these, line them up, and it drops right down. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and snug these up. Now the upper truss mounts do not have recessed ends. That's because uh, if I did, when you remove the upper tube assembly, they would actually hang up. So we couldn't have it. So these don't need to be wrenched home, but a little tighter than what you would do on the bottom. Once that's secure, then again, if you have options, this completes the uh, connection from the podium to the secondary do here, which this scope has. And then at that point, the scope is balanced out and ready to go. All right, the next step is to install the light shroud. So the light shroud is a little bit different than conventional scopes. Obviously, if you put the scope up towards the zenith, you can see that the mirror box is angled, so you got to make sure the light shroud goes on the right way. Uh, light shrouds usually have two seams. One of them will have the drawstrings come out, which will always go on the bottom of the scope. That's how to locate it. And then obviously, the angled one is what you'll pull over the scope first. So make sure you get the light shroud in its right orientation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of locate the top seam, draping that over my hand, pull the scope down. And again, because of the nature of this scope, that it's much wider on the bottom than on the top, it's very easy to put the light shroud on after the upper tube assembly is on. So I'm just going to kind of get it started. I'm going to bring it up, again, draw a string on the bottom, and I'm just start pulling it down, okay, and then I want to get it over the focuser. Now on the top, it's going to stay on top of the upper thumb bolts, that's what actually keeps it secured, so you can pull it tight, pull it like that, bring these over, I'm going to pull this draw string tight right now. Put it back up. Okay. And then I'm going to pull this down over the bottom thumb bolts and I'm going to pull it snug. Get all the wrinkles out of it so this way we don't have, we don't have any of the light shroud dripping into the optical path. Get it nice and tight. And then again, draw a string. On the bottom, I'll pull that tight, and that's it. Okay, the last thing uh, to complete the assembly is going to be to install the Argo Navis podium. Okay, this is a complete unit. It's got the Argo Navis in it. You can see the plug-ins here on the back of the Argo. This is your 12 volt power supply uh, encoder cable, and this is the DS. Uh, the serial one cable which completes the connection from the Argo to the servo cap. Alright, this goes in the rear handle hole on this side of the scope. Okay, just slide it in. Again, it has a stop. I'm going to line it up, put the thumb bolt in. Okay, and then your connections are as follows from the hand pad. I'm going to go into the HC port in the servo cap box, the silver cable from the serial one port of the Argo Navis to the DSC port in the servo cat. And then you'll see you have two RCA connectors here. One has a coupler on it. This doesn't matter which goes where. So you just put one into the RCA plug into the back of the rocker. The other one will finish the connection to the encoder arm and then of course up to the front end and then the last cable here is goes into the cat 5e which finishes the uh, altitude and azimuth encoders and then here we have this retractable uh, uh, cord for the uh, altitude encoder I'm going to slide that up the encoder arm comes out goes in very easy and then 
click it into the encoder. Again, this does not have to be removed unless you are taking the mirror box off, so all of this can remain on the scope. Okay, that finishes the assembly of our 22 inch here. Um, to, to, say, to take the scope apart, it's basically a reverse of exactly what we did. I would recommend starting with the podium, then the light shroud, upper tube assembly, etc., all the way down. Again, uh, if you are going to ramp the scope into your vehicle, you do not need to remove the mirror, mirror box, uh, altitude cable, encoder arm, or anything like that. In, in that sense, you would do it the way you would any other scope. Um, at this point, all you need to do is collimate, do your two-star alignment, and you're ready to go. So, enjoy.